multiple setbacks. And if you're looking for the geometric shape, it is the pyramid below the statue at the very top of the building. But in my opinion, this is the epitome of our giving architecture. The building is original in design, powerful in presence, and with its placement at the bottom of LaSalle Street, it fits perfectly to the city's financial district. A statue atop the building is of the Roman goddess Ceres, and she is the goddess of grain, wheat, and agriculture. She was sculpted by John Edward Storrs, also in 1929. And my favorite fact about Ceres is that she has no face. It's a big oval up there. You see, John Edward Storrs, when he was creating the statue, was placing on top of the tallest building in the city. And he figured, who's going to bother to build taller than 45 stories or 605 feet? Probably no one. No one will ever see the statue's face. Giving him very little reason to make sure she had one. Ceres was placed on top of the building, which once again opened in 1925, sorry, 1929. And for almost 25 years, it did hold on to the spot as tallest structure in the city. It was only outdone in 1954 by the Prudential Insurance Building, which was only five feet taller. But buildings in the nearby area, and obviously around the world, have surpassed the height of Ceres, so now everyone knows that she doesn't have a face. Just next to us, we have this pink octagonal building, and this is 311 South Wacker Drive. Its name is just its address. It's the tallest building on the planet to be known only by its address number, standing at 961 feet tall and 65 stories. The glass crown atop the building is 65 feet in diameter and 70 feet tall. Each and every night, that top is illuminated by over 2,000 four-foot-tall fluorescent light fixtures. In terms of light, it dominates the skyline. It's done by Cohen Patterson Fox in 1990. Now we're going to have three kick-butt views of the Willis Tower. The first one will be on our right in just a second at our two o'clock. The name officially changed for this building from Sears to Willis in 2009 as the UK's Willis Insurance brokerage moved in and became the largest leaser. In doing so, they gained the naming rights to the building they just seized the opportunity to change the name from Sears to Willis. It's completely illegal. It didn't cost them anything extra. Now, if you go straight to the right in a moment, you'll have our second great view. This building started construction in 1968 and was finished in 74. It was designed by Bruce Graham with Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill and was engineered by Dr. Fajler Khan. That same duo designed and engineered the John Hancock building, which we will see later on. This building contains over 100 elevators and has over 16,000 windows on its exterior. The building is supported primarily on a grid of 114 steel and concrete caissons. It is also not truly upright. The Willis Tower leans six inches to the west on its very top floor. Our last view is now at our floor o'clock as we finish clearing the bridge. The building's ever so slight lean was accounted for throughout the entire construction process. It is a result of the building's asymmetrical design and its uneven weight distribution. For almost 25 years, that was the tallest building on the planet. It is currently number nine. The tallest building on the planet right now is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. That building stands at 2,716 feet tall, 163 stories, and 828 meters. That building is also University. expandable. It can go up an additional 150 feet if anyone tries to outdo it in terms of height over the next few years. And my favorite fact about the Burj Khalifa is that it's the world's tallest building and it's built entirely on sand. Yeah. Now just next to us we have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Center done in 1987. The building was designed by Fujikawa and Johnson and the exterior is dark pink granite. Uh, the, two, the two towers stand at 40 stories. If you don't mind tipping your heads back, you can check out those fun corners. Those are called serrated corners, and they account for four corner offices per corner, that's 16 per floor. As we clear the bridge, we have the Civic Opera Building, done in 1929. This building was also done by Graham Anderson, Probst, and White. You can see the building's title inscribed right on the exterior, and that's actually a Roman U, not a V. It's meant to complement the other Roman details on the building. If you're having a hard time locating them, check out the pediments. Those are the triangle shapes. There's one on each end, north and south. And also the olive leaves that sit above those circles, especially the larger ones with the lattice pattern inside. But this building has a limestone exterior. It has a great big setback, and that pediment is a triangle, so it qualifies as a geometric shape. The building is also considered an Art Deco style building. And that's the back side of it. The front side, the side along Weber Drive, features a beautiful covered walkway that has architectural ornamentation.
fashion, referencing styles of song, dance, and theater. We have another building by Graham Anderson Probst and White, just to our right. This is 110 North Wacker Drive, done in 1968. This building is only six stories tall, and from here I'd like to jump up on the right. You can see that purple glass building. This is 155 North Wacker Drive, done by Gesh Partners in 2009. Yeah, now as we clear this bridge, stay on the right, go just ahead of us. You'll see a building with a brick exterior and lots of ivy. The building with the brick exterior and the ivy is the Great Lakes Building, done in 1912 by Hullabird and Roche. And this building is in the Chicago style, which is a style distinct to the city. It emerged during the 1880s as the city was still rebuilding from the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. And buildings in the Chicago style always feature three things. The first is a steel skeleton frame, which I know we can't see. Take my word for it, it's there. The second thing is a flame or fireproof exterior. The two most common are brick and terracotta. And last but not least, have the building be Chicago style. That's the great big three-panel window. A traditional Ooh. Chicago window, which we'll see in a few minutes, would feature one large center panel that does not move, and has two small sashes, one on each side, that That's open and close by going up and down. Clock. This is considered a modern take on the Chicago oh, style is. window, since all three panels that are the same clock. size to allow for more symmetry. All right, we are turning back onto the main branch. Let's talk about this green building with the curve. This is 333 West Wacker Drive. It went up in 1983. If anyone's seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, this is Ferris's dad's office building. The building was done by Cohn, Patterson, Fox in 1983. And just like 300 South Riverside, it has the elegant curve to complement the curve and the river as the main and south branches meet. But the best part about 333 is actually the two buildings adjacent to it. We have 191 North Wacker Drive with the dark blue glass and the X and the cube at the very top. And then 225 West Wacker Drive coming up. Next, uh, the light pink tan building with the silver spires on the very top. Now, all three of these buildings were done by the same firm that's Cone Patterson Fox. And all three of the buildings were done at different times. 1983, 1989, and then 2002. But all of the buildings seem to work together because they're done in similar material. They're glass, they feature the horizontal lines, they're all color blocked, and they also feature those medallion style air vents. You can see one just beneath the American flag on 225 West Wacker Drive. I would like to point out though that it's extremely rare in any American city to have two buildings right next to one another, done by the same firm. So it is very rare that we have these three buildings right next to one another, all done by the same firm. Uh, it's made even weirder by the fact that Cole Pedersen Fox, the firm that designed all three buildings, doesn't even have a Chicago office. Uh, let's go one city block ahead. You can see that building with the white spire at the very top, and this is the LaSalle Wacker building, done in 1930. The building was done by Hullabird and ah. Root. Can anyone tell me what style this is? Chicago. Nice job with the Art Deco. Because if you walk away with anything from this tour, I really hope it's Art Deco. The building has the limestone exterior, a great big setback. If you're looking for the geometric shape, you're going to see it as soon as we play on the bridge. Go to the base of the building, three windows. At the top of the window, there is a stainless steel geometric pattern. So there's our geometric pattern. But the official term for that pattern is called a freeze. It just means picture panel. Freezes will do one of two things. Either show off a common pattern, like we see here. Now this particular pattern is done throughout the building, and it helps the structure seem fluid in terms of design. The other thing a freeze can do is tell a story that's done through a series of panels. And the story told is typically one significant, significant, significant excuse me, uh, to the area where the building stands where the company that commissioned 